Hello, I'm Father Robert Lord, a priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn, professor of philosophy at St. John's University. Welcome to another episode of the Catholic Novel. Today we're doing a novel called Mort Durbin, written by J.F. Powers. And I think I can say in the 20th century, the two outstanding short story writers, uh, Catholic short story writers, were Flannery O'Connor and J.F. Powers. Uh, and each, incidentally, each wrote two, only two novels but they wrote many short stories. And J.F. Powers' short stories often are about priests, and they often involve satire. Uh, some, of them, some of them are very funny. And this, this book, this novel we're doing today, Mort Durbin, is also very funny. In an interview, uh, J.F. Powers said, uh, at the time of one of, his bo one of the books came out, like a collection of short stories, or maybe it was Mort Durbin, but I think it was a collection of short stories, he got a letter from someone saying, you know, maybe if you got to know some better priests, you would write better books. That someone was really offended by the fact that uh, J.F. Powers was sort of satirizing priests, okay? I think the man, uh, you know, that's interesting, I said a man, I don't know whether the interview was with a man. I think the person really misunderstood. Uh, the satire that J.F. Powers uh, engages in, it seems to me, is a very loving satire. He's focusing on the, the very human aspect of priests, okay? Uh, and he does it very cleverly. He's a really good, good writer. I'm going to read the, the back cover of Mort Durbin. It's a very good, succinct expression of what this novel is about. The hero of J.F. Power's comic masterpiece is Father Urban, a man of the cloth who is also a man of the world. I think that's, that's, that kind of sums up the whole book. Charming with an expansive vision of the spiritual life and a high tolerance for moral ambiguity, Urban enjoys a national reputation as a speaker on the religious circuit and has big plans for the future. But then the provincial head of his dowdy religious order banishes him to a retreat house in the Minnesota hinterlands. Father Urban soon bounces back, carrying God's word with undaunted enthusiasm through the golf courses, fishing lodges, and backyard barbecues of his new turf. Yet even as he triumphs, his tribulations mount. And in the end, his greatest success proves a setback from which he cannot recover. Father Urban is not a, quote, sinful priest, the way Graham Greene's priest is a sin, sinful priest in, in the, the Power and the Glory. Uh, he's not a saint, the way uh, George Bernardo's priest is a saint and Diary of a Country Priest. And he's not struggling with the faith uh, the way uh, Otsu is struggling in Deep River, in, in Shisaku Endo's Deep River. The one word that would capture uh, Urban and capture all his problems is he is worldly. And apparently th th this, this is what J.F. Powers uh, is most interested in satirizing. And, and he does it in a very funny way, okay? Um, but it, 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 he does it in a funny way, but it's pretty serious. It, he, he means it rather seriously, okay? The... Um, a uh, reason I am very interested in this series, or m many reasons, but one is, here's what I'm finding, and uh, I mean, I'd be interested if you find it also. There seems to be a whole group of people now who, who may believe in God or may not believe in God, who may believe in the life beyond the grave or who may not believe in the life beyond the grave. But what seems to be new is they don't seem to see that the questions are very important. How you come down on whether God exists or not can change your whole life. And how you come down on whether there's a life beyond the grave can change your whole life. And I'm running into students and other people for whom the question is no longer a burning question. They seem to be able to, this is an impression, only God knows, but they seem to be able to live without uh, worrying about these things. I shouldn't, say, I shouldn't even say worrying. They seem to be able to live without thinking about these realities. And I think that's something new. I mean, we've always had people who didn't believe in God. We've always had people who don't believe in life beyond the grave. But I think, uh, I, I always thought most people saw how you answer those two questions. Is there a God? Isn't there, is there a life beyond the grave? It was kind of important. It was really important. So something new seems to be emerging. And that's one of the reasons I'm delighted to do this, because I think Catholic novels make the reality of God more, more real to the reader, or at least they can. Uh, and the story of Christianity and of Catholicism can become more real. So what I'm picturing is a kind of, if, for people who read a number of these novels, 
a kind of a transformation of consciousness. So I want to just quote from an author I like very much. This is Father Michael Joseph Gallagher, a Jesuit. He died a couple of years ago. He's written a number of terrific books. And this book that I'm quoting from is called The Human Poetry of Faith. Uh, I recommend it to you. It's, it's, a, it's an excellent book. And he's explaining, in what I'm going to read to you, he's explaining why uh, he has written this particular book, okay? So he says, this time, I want to give witness to a few truths that emerge from my listening to people over many years. For instance, there is often pain and confusion behind the mask of everything fine, thanks. But people also have a hidden poetry in them, not necessarily one that would find expression in writing, but a zone of imagination that is seldom recognized by themselves. We live with unvisited spaces within ourselves, unknown not only to others, but even to ourselves. It is hard to find the key on one's own. A certain quality of listening and presence is necessary to reach what Shakespeare called the melting mood. When doors of imagination open to something of self-tenderness, we become ready for God. So this book is about liberating our human depths so that we might be ready for the wonder of revelation. Not forgetting that revelation also happens within seemingly non-religious realities. God's spirit is at work in all that is good. Like an artist, the spirit shapes our entry into freedom on many levels. Therefore, these pages explore the pre-religious zone where the spirit works on us to lead us towards the fullest surprise of Christ. Okay, so I think reading Catholic novels can do that. Uh, it can open our imagination, as he puts it so beautifully. There are spaces within us that we're not aware of. Uh, so, so, you know, even, even uh, at this point in time, I still believe largely the Catholic novel is a treasure hidden in a field, okay? Uh, so Mort Durbin is a little bit different in terms of the novels we've, uh, we've read, and especially this vision of the priesthood. It's just a little bit different. I don't mean it's, it's against the faith, but I mean it's, it's done in a satirical way. But maybe the very difference will cause us to, to think, okay? Cause us to, to, to take another look at what we believe. Uh, in an article in Comma Wheel in July 7th, uh, 2017, Jeffrey Myers, I think, uh, did a very nice job of uh, pinpointing what makes Mort Durbin a kind of a masterpiece, okay? So uh, here's what Myers wrote. Powers masterpiece, Mort Durbin, 1962, whose title suggests the Arthurian themes in the work of Sir Thomas Mallory, won the National Book Award in 1963. In the novel, at once comic and profoundly serious, Father Urban struggles to fulfill his vocation and to get things done. A real operator, attractive and athletic, a dynamic preacher and fundraiser, with a gift for handling people both high and low, Urban is the right man in the wrong order. The willfully mediocre Clementines, but by the way, that's a, that's a fictional order. Based in a leased building in Chicago, Members of the order conduct missions and retreats and serve as visiting priests. The novel's locales are confined to Chicago, Minneapolis, and small Minnesota towns connected by train to the ramshackle retreat house, St. Clement's Hill, at the end of a dirt road and to the fishing lakes in the north. Throughout the novel, Urban is beset by worldly temptations, ambition, fame and power, gifts, money, and sex, but he's so skilled at milking his connections and grasping opportunities that he doesn't see the dangers ahead. There is no literal Mort Durbin, no literal death of Urban, uh, as there is in Mallory's uh, Mort D'Arthur, but he recovers his vocation and is reborn, a sadder and wiser priest. In the ceremony which elects him as provincial, he repeats the principles of the 12th century, 12th century Cistercian monk, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, affirming the primary importance of the altar and the sacraments in a true priest's life. Despite the blows to his pride and the failure of his ambition, Urban keeps trying and endures. Powers, always artful and amusing, creates a comic masterpiece 
about a, flaw, a flawed man's inner life, okay? That's quite an accomplishment. I mean, if Myers is right, and I think he is, that is quite an accomplishment. Um, so uh, the man who was offended by uh, uh, Powers' uh, depiction of priests, I think, missed something. It seems obvious to me that um, Powers loves the priest he is, loves the priest he is satirizing. And it's almost as you're reading, he's rooting for them, like he's rooting for Urban to realize how his, his energies are, are so really finely self-centered. He's a very attractive speaker, he's very popular, and he's going to do, he's going to sort of revolutionize the order, okay? And when he gets his comeuppance, uh, the, the death of Urban is not a physical death, it's a, it's a death to the worldly priest that he was. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a wise novel, it's got a lot of insights into human nature, and I think some special insights into the foibles of priests. Um, how how uh, Powers knows priests so well, <laughs> this is a mystery to me. He must have had an, a, a large number of friends who were priests, and maybe they told them stories and shared uh, their experiences and so on, because he's right on target. Uh, many times when I'm reading J.F. Powers, I'm caused to smile. As a matter of fact, not, not only am I caused to smile, I'm caused to think of some, <laughs> some priests I know. Now, maybe I should be thinking of myself. You know, if the, if the novel really works, maybe it's, it's, tell, it's saying to Lorda, you know, wake up, okay, wake up. Some of, this is, some of this is your problem, okay? So in terms of all the novels we've done, I would say this is, the, is uh, unique. It, it's different from, all, I think, it's different from all the others. Um, the, the only one similar to it would be the coll collection of short stories, Presence of Grace, because once again, uh, that, there, that was written by Powers and he satirized in Greece. But in terms of the novels, this one is, is unlike the others in many ways. Uh, if you have a taste for satire, you're going to love this novel. Mm -hmm.